here with us on Market Guru. Joining us is Seth Freeman, Chief Executive Officer, EM Capital Management. Seth, great having you with us. Uh, the Morning. last time we spoke, Seth, uh, you had talked about how it wasn't entirely unsurprising to see the kind of flows uh, that, that we'd been getting into India, but it was clearly not a long-term phenomenon. We're already seeing that cool-off in the fund flows. I just wanted to get your perspective on, on really the pattern that we're seeing when it comes to the, uh, uh, you know, the liquidity picture at this point of time. Well, um, this morning here I was looking at SEBI's most recent uh, quarterly announcement, mm -hmm. and it was striking to look at the fund flow charts uh, going back just 12 months. Uh, it, we all have a short memory about how dire cool. things looked uh, in the summertime. Uh, investors uh, are active in the Indian market, but at the same time, I think we've seen the biggest pullback really in debt uh, more than shares. So then, you know, Seth, as, as we get ready for that uh, big election event itself in a couple of weeks from now, we've been talking about how the entire pre-election rally is taking place. But the big question here is, with the kind of move that we've seen in terms of the markets already, Seth, what, what are foreign investors actually making of the Indian markets right now? Is there still enough uh, a risk reward out here in terms of the upside left for uh, the markets? What, what, what should be the positioning uh, for, for the Indian markets currently? Well, certainly for momentum investors, when it's quiet, mm -hmm. it, it's uh, you'll see drawbacks. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, as I am happy to say, uh, long-term investors will be rewarded in the Indian market. And, you know, there are certain uh, Sensex stocks that have not appreciated as much as others. Uh, but I would say that part of the withdrawal from the market, the outflows, reflects uh, emerging markets investors positioning themselves to participate in the Alibaba IPO. That's in fact uh, something that we've been uh, talking about this this uh, today as well. Uh, Seth, uh, tell us a little bit more about this IPO. I mean, in terms of transaction size, it's huge. I mean, we're looking at almost double the transaction size Ooh. of an Amazon, just to give, an, give a sense, really. Uh, uh, but, you know, there are still some uh, questions that investors have around the IPO as well. Uh, just take us through your initial response to it, what you think, uh, how you think investors should be looking at it. Well, it certainly is huge. And I think for uh, many Americans, it's very difficult to swallow uh, the, the scale of this company and really to uh, now understand uh, the depth and size of the Chinese market. Um, the, the most striking thing I read today was how Alipay, from a mobile uh, transaction standpoint, uh, does about $150 billion worth of, of uh, sales uh, this in the last 12 months, while only about 30% of that was sales represented by Alibaba. So we are talking about very large businesses. Uh, the fundamental problem for investors investing into China is the uh, quality of financial reporting and uh, fundamental governance issues. Seth, I want to stay with the uh, IT pack of it, and you know you're the heart of the technology, you know whereabouts of the world. Here in India as well, this morning we've got an influential brokerage cutting down the Infosys price target dramatically, all the way sub three thousand. Mm -hmm. The worry there being that the turnaround will be much slower than what the market is anticipating. What's your sense? I know last time we talked about it, you said you were in conversation with someone on the plane, and you know they were giving you a good insight of it. Uh, are you remaining bullish on this sector? And do you think it will be very company specific from here on? Well, I think that the major Indian IT companies uh, will continue to grow their business in the U.S. I'm, I really haven't followed them in terms of European revenues and winnings, but uh, the financial services companies here and large corporations are going to continue looking for operational efficiency, and uh, they're going to be relying on the Indian IT companies as uh, the U.S. economy continues to expand. In terms of the engineering pack as well, Seth, now that's the other one that we, I remember talking to you about uh, last time around. 
Well, what's your call there? Because these stocks have actually seen a decent run up of late in mm -hmm. this little bit of a lackluster trade that the markets have been seeing of late. They're actually cooling off. W would this be a buy on dip strategy when we talk about the engineering of the cap goods space? Well, I, I think it's a, a function of some ebullience about Mr. Modi and the implications of uh, infrastructure finally taking True. off. But uh, India has such a huge infrastructure deficit. You know, uh, 10 years ago at conferences, it was talked about at 500 uh, billion. It quickly became a trillion three or four years ago. So maybe it's $1.2 trillion worth of infrastructure backlog. At a certain point, uh, for social harmony, at the least, uh, India's infrastructure has got to expand. Seth, uh, what do you do? Uh, where do you really put in your money at this point when it comes to mid-caps as well? So in the cyclical space as well, are you willing to go a tier lower and look at companies which are willing to make their balance sheets better as the year goes ahead? Uh, we have in the past, and certainly, um, you know, mid-caps uh, tend to lag when India does better. But uh, then when the market really becomes frothy, uh, they, they can run up quite a bit. The problem with mid-caps is that uh, for most foreign investors, they just simply aren't liquid enough. Uh, the fact is that an Indian mid-cap is really, in many, many cases, considered a micro-cap or a small cap here in the U.S. And there just are fewer investors uh, looking at those companies. Uh, however, you know, I think that, that uh, non-bank finance companies, no matter how the economy goes, will do well, especially those that are uh, focused on a rural uh, India and uh, small Indian companies. Seth, now, you know, you have repeatedly said that it's a long-term market, uh, you know, you're not uh, trying to look uh, too much at uh, just uh, this one pivotal uh, election, but uh, just, you know, for the sake of conversation, just tell us your, your, in your opinion, you know, what you're really expecting over the next couple of weeks. We've got just about 10 days to go for the results, and uh, are you expecting a lot of volatility? What would you advise investors to do uh, in that time period? Stay away, buy on dips, uh, what would you advise? Well, I would buy on dips, for sure. Um, I think it has to do as much with exogenous uh, things going on in this world. Uh, the situation in Ukraine is obviously negative for oil prices. India is very dependent on, uh, on oil, foreign oil. And uh, it uh, has a, a very dire consequence on India's macroeconomic situation. So if Ukraine continues to implode, as it certainly looks like on TV uh, tonight, um, you know, that could cause further ripples in emerging markets. And uh, frankly, some other global events, uh, whether it's uh, bad news in Nigeria, uh, airplanes that can't be found, uh, uh, ferries turning over and hundreds of people dying at a time, this is just bad news that uh, makes investors concerned and it kind of uh, fouls them up from making decisions.